Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and you could purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today, we are discussing the 2018 Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Hodinkee 10th Anniversary. For 2018, this was a 500-piece limited series in stainless steel dedicated to the image, if not precisely the function and form, of a watch inherited by Hodinkee founder Ben Clymer from his grandfather. Now, the watch you see here is technically part of the minimally beveled Primitive Case Moonwatch series, so it follows the first Omega in space of 2012, as well as the CK2998 profile cases. So you remember those watches? This is the that case. 39.7 millimeters in stainless steel, the 500 piece limited edition, is a little bit different than you've seen it previously on this channel because I've covered this watch with its conventional and standard strap, but I've never seen or reviewed it on the bracelet, and that does change things. Not the thickness, which remains 14.4 millimeters, nor the absolute lug-to-lug -lug dimension, as the case remains 47 millimeters from lug-to-lug, -lug, 19 millimeters between the lugs, but when you add the solid end links of the bracelet, not only does the watch look closer to the original Speedmaster Mark 40, the reference 3520.53 that inspired it, but it actually holds up a little better. I think the power of the bracelet better matches this rather strong dial combination of features and colors. So I think this watch wears and looks a little bit better than it does on the strap. If you include the solid end links, it does have a broader span of 52 millimeters across the wrist, and I think it looks a bit more natural with a case and lug profile that now better matches that otherwise overpowering dial. Jumping in real close to take a quick look at the links themselves, you can see that as with many Omega Speedmaster bracelets, it's somewhere between a dress bracelet and a sports bracelet. You can see there's sort of an irregular shape to the profile, almost like little houses, polished on their flank, removable links fixed by screws, and you can see there are half links to allow precise sizing. Polished on the center of the intermediates, but otherwise satin finished with a little bit of a taper to it. You can see that the clasp is a single fold deployment, and it does fe feature a trigger system, so it's not a snap or clamshell. It's a very secure twin trigger system. You must disengage both triggers to open the clasp. Now you can see there are two different anchoring points inside the clasp, so you can change the anchoring point and micro adjust the fit. There's also another half link on the side of the clasp. Rolling back to the case, again, those solid end links are perhaps a little bit of a juxtaposition when compared to the rather primitive profile of the minimally beveled pre-liar case. Uh, you can see that the bracelet's very much of the modern era with conforming profile end link. Now there is a tachymeter scale that swells the width of the case and you can see it's polished on its outer face. The bevels here not quite as elaborate as you'll see on a standard moon watch as this case in the First Omega in space and the CK2998 was designed to evoke the pre-1965, pre-professional Speedmaster series. And you can see that continues on the crown side where you have vintage inspired pump pushers, but again, no shouldering or shear guards as you'll find on a moon watch. There is a anodized aluminum insert for the tachymeter bezel. We'll zoom out a little bit. And you can see that it frames a dial covered, by the way, by a sapphire, not hesolite as on a standard moon watch, but a dial that is best described as a sort of slate blue. It's not quite the gray that it appears on camera. It does have a little bit of a blue overtone. Now, getting a little bit closer, you can see that there is a Arabic numeral track outboard of the Arabic numeral hours. It is a printed dial, but it does have a little bit of a change in plane thanks to the sunken sub-registers, which are dished with Rayhot. Now, what you're looking at is an awful lot of color designed to evoke alternately Omega chronographs of the 1970s in the form of the chronograph seconds hand, and then that Speedmaster 352053, which is a triple calendar watch. So this watch is fundamentally different in dial layout and function, but you're getting a lot of the same color and character of the original, if not exactly the running gear. The watch does feature handsome darkened centers on its hour and minute hand that creates the appearance that they float over the dial, a feature that I do happen to love. Turn it all over, and you can see there is a dedication to Hodinkee on the case back, Hodinkee, 10th anniversary edition, and then you have the hippocampus, or the seahorse, a traditional symbol of the Speedmaster family, because back in 1957, uh, when the first Speedmaster debuted, it was technically part of the Seamaster water-resistant watch family, and that's why there has always been a Seamaster seahorse on the back of the Speedmasters. Now underneath that case back, it's conventional NASA-approved moon watch caliber, the caliber that still flies 
on space station missions. It is the 1861 18 joules manual wind 48 hour power reserve. It is a cam and lateral clutch chrono, but with outstanding tuning such that the feel and the sound is very much that of a column wheel. This is probably one of the best tuned cam chronos you'll ever encounter. A testament to the industrial might of Omega, and remember this is the LaMagna base based on the LaMagna 1873 Abausch. Let's have a listen to that pusher. The 18 joule movement is quite crisp, and again, beaten at 21.6, it is a 48 hour manual wind, water resistant down to 50 meters. So, not an aquatic watch, but plenty of loom and a handsome and probably better balanced all around sports watch on the bracelet. You can see it and make it yours on the watch box. The Speedmaster Hodinkee by Night.